And we're back with Lily Eskelson Garcia, president of the National Education Association. What, 2.3 million? 3 million. I was close. 3 million. 3 million members all across this country. You're here at the Democratic National Convention. Yes, Your um, union has endorsed Hillary Clinton. Yes. Thursday, these halls clear out. Everybody goes home. What happens? That's when the work starts. That's when the work starts. We had two good candidates running, two people who've been friends of education. What uh, tilted in uh, her favor for us was uh, Hillary Clinton's lifelong dedication to children, to special education, to our dreamers, to making sure kids, no matter what their zip code, get what they need to succeed. So to walk away from here, with her as the nominee, it's not only historic that she's a woman, but it's historic that I'm not sure we've ever had another friend for public education. So, and, and what and what is it? I mean, obviously, funding early childhood is one piece. But what is it that what what needs to happen, right? So we've just saw the approval of ESSA, um, and now you know as as we sort of roll on forward, what needs to happen? You know, let me tell you what really impressed me because we we looked at people's records, we interviewed the candidates that wanted to be interviewed, and what blew me away was as I asked her that very question, and that was, by the way, before uh, the Every Student Succeeds Act was signed, um, to say, uh, what are your policies, where are your priorities, she stopped me, and she said, before I gel everything that I want for public schools, I need to talk to the teachers. I need to talk to the counselors. I need to talk to the support staff. What's working? What's not working? What are your ideas? I'm not going to talk about what a special education teacher needs until I talk to a special education teacher. And so that blew me away. Someone who actually said, you're the guys that know what you're talking about when it comes to what your students need. So now that we have this new law, and it does away with federally mandated high stakes tests, you're going to judge a whole and happy child by whether or not they hit a cut score on a math and reading test, gone. Now that there's a dashboard of indicators that's required, and every state has to build what those indicators are going to look like. And so one of the things we're trying to convince every politician, from the president to the school board, is you should walk into the best public schools in your state, you should take an inventory of what makes them so successful, the staff, the programs, everything you got, and that should be your standard for every school in your state. So Lily, here's a question, right? How, I mean, beyond just education, how does this party come together? There was clearly some action on the floor at the beginning of this convention. There will continue to be some isms and schisms between the Bernie, Hillary people. There's a lot of Bernie people that are angry. How do they come together? I think you're already seeing it. I think the tone and tenor of this entire uh, convention changed when Michelle Obama spoke. Uh, if you listened to that, she was the only one that wasn't heckled when she said the words Hillary Clinton. Um, and I think her appeal to what brings the progressives, the community that cares about communities, into this hall, if we allow politics to divide us, here's your favorite candidate, here's my favorite candidate, there are differences between the candidates, but what unites them is profound. If we allow ourselves to be divided, all we do is give strength to the true opponent here, and that's Donald Trump. And I don't think anybody wants to leave this hall thinking that they have helped Donald Trump. No, and that's, I mean, that's a good point. I think that's a really good point. I don't think, and I, I, I hear that. So, so how do you, so that's right, I think that there are more that unite all Democrats and divide us, but how do you, what needs to happen to bring them together? I mean, what is the actual action steps that, to bring these two groups together? Well, I think you saw, I think you've already seen that in terms of the, the compromises and the uh, coming together on the platform, on trade issues, on education issues and affordable college on things where I think um, Hillary Clinton is very open to saying, let's talk about how we strengthen this platform, strengthen this party, and we all move forward together. Um, and you heard Senator Sanders yesterday appealing to his supporters, 
saying you know, we ran a great race. We brought some great issues into this campaign, and now the movement continues. The the uh, uh, lobbying each other continues. The conversations continue. You've got the two leaders talking about coming together. Um, that is huge. That is huge. This was a really toughly fought race. And so to have the two of them come together and say, it's time. Um, I think you're already seeing it. I think you're seeing less divisiveness today because of Senator Sanders' speech last night, because of Michelle Obama's speech last night. Um, today, yes, there are still people that are unhappy, but they're starting to listen to the process. Their votes are being counted right now. And so to say, I have my say, I have influence, um, and we are gonna see something, I think, different tomorrow, and by the time- So, the next what I'm day, hearing is you're saying over time, by the time we got here on Thursday. There's no magic pill. The, you know that. I that's know. Not, I'm not saying not there's a magic pill. Work. No, emotions yeah. take time. I think there's still probably some Hillary and Obama people that aren't getting along um, today. Um, but uh, and, and so what do you think, what will the president say? Uh, he hasn't spoken yet, so m most people when they watch it, the president have already spoken. But what will he say that will resonate in this hall? Um, he's a very popular president. Yes. What will he say that he resonates in this hall in the next coming days? I think you're going to hear very much the same uh, tone and the same message as Michelle Obama delivered. Um, one of the things that President Obama does, maybe better than um, um, any other person I've heard, uh, except for his wife, is to make it personal, to talk about his own personal experiences and how life has impacted him. Um, I think you're going to hear that. And you're right. The, Hillary and Barack Obama had just as um, you know tough uh, uh, a race as uh, Bernie and Hillary. And so they found a way. Even though, yes, you're right, there might, there might be some sore feelings on both sides, they did not let that get in the way of moving forward and doing some great things for, um, for Americans, for the, for the world. Um, so if anything, they've shown an example, they've shown a model that it can happen and how it happens. And it means that you, you know, like put your weapons down and you shake hands and you say we have some deep differences, but what we actually agree on is so much greater than what the we disagree differences on. we have. Uh, Lily, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, we appreciate you being on the show. Um, and as always, folks, you continue watching. Check us out at youtube.com slash follow show. We're back at this break.